In this lecture, I want to show you the difference between prevent default and return false. So, to illustrate this, I have created a very basic web page. I have added two sections. This is section 1 and this is section 2. And I have given the IDs like Ancestor1 and Ancestor2 and class name like Ancestor. So, this is just for styling purpose. The class name is given. And within that, I have added P elements. Here as well, I have added P element with ID parent1 and parent2 and again class name parent. And within that, I have added a hyperlink which links to the google.com website. And I have specified IDs like child1 and child2. And I have also styled these elements a bit to see the difference. So, this is ancestor for which I have given the background color to be pink and then the parent for which I have specified the background color to be silver and for the hyperlinks I have increased the font size to be 20px. So now this is how the web page is looking like. So this is the ancestor which is the main parent and this silver box is the parent element and this one and two are the hyperlinks. For this one this silver box and this pink box are parent elements. This is the direct parent or immediate parent and this is the parent of this silver. So, this is also a parent element to this one hyperlink. And for this, this silver is its direct parent and this is the parent of this element. So, I have actually added the nested structure to explain this concept. So, hope you understand the basic structure of this web page. Now, let me try to add some code within document.ready part. So, I have already added reference to the latest jQuery file and let me specify $.ancestor which is the high level parent dot click. I just want to show a message like the ancestor is clicked. So, within function, I need to write the code. So, here let me write alert ancestor is click okay then i want to show a message for parent as well so dollar dot parent dot click again i want to show just a message so function curly braces and within this let me enter alert parent is clicked now before saving this let me show you the output what will happen if we just wrote this much code Okay, so I haven't saved this file and let me click this one. See, it is redirected to Google. Again, if I click two, it is also redirected to Google because we have specified here ahref http google.com. Okay, now I want to write separate functions for child one and child two. That is for the link one and link two. So here let me write dollar hash child1 because I am selecting the element using its id dot click okay for this let me again add function and here let me write alert link1 is clicked okay so I want to show that link1 is clicked now let me copy the same and change this to child2 and here link2 is clicked now let me save this and let me move back, let me refresh and now let me click 1. So what you are seeing, link 1 is clicked, it is showing parent is clicked, ancestor is clicked and then it is directed to google.com and if I click 2, link 2 is clicked, parent is clicked ancestor is clicked and it is redirected to google.com. So what happens here if you already know about event bubbling you might be knowing the reason why it displays all the alert messages even if we clicked only the link. So if you do not know event bubbling you might be expecting when we click link 1 only this message should be displayed right because we have clicked child 1. So here happens event bubbling. So, what is event bubbling? Event bubbling happens when the user interacts with a nested element. When an action or an event happens on a nested element, actually the event bubbles up 
through all the ancestor elements. That is why when we just clicked child 1 or child 2, we are seeing the message parent is clicked and ancestor is clicked because this event is bubbled through all its ancestor elements and both this 1 and 2 have two ancestor elements. This is the immediate parent and this is also an ancestor element. That is why we have seen three messages though we expected one. Here we have clicked the link only. So actually the message should be link one is clicked. But as event bubbling happens, the event is triggered for all its parent elements or ancestor elements. Hence this and this message is also displayed. Now let me click it once again. Link one is clicked parent is clicked, ancestor is clicked and it is redirected to google.com and here as well link 2 is clicked, okay, parent is clicked and ancestor is clicked and moved to the website. Now I want you to show the difference between return false and prevent default. So you might have used prevent default a couple of times. For child 1, let me specify here event, okay, and I want to specify event dot prevent default, okay, and for this one, I want to specify return false. So, what is prevent default doing? Prevent default, as the name indicates, it will prevent the default action from happening. So, what is the default action of a link? or a hyperlink, it is redirecting to the specified web page. So here we have specified http slash google.com. So it will not be redirected. That is a prevent default method. It will prevent the default action from happening. And here we have specified return false. Now let's see the output. Let me refresh. Let me click one. Link one is clicked. Parent is clicked. Ancestor is clicked. It is not going to the google.com site. Still, it is showing all the three messages, which means event bubbling is happening, right? Now, here, let me click 2. Link 2 is clicked, no other message. So, what does that mean? Here, when we specify return false, we are actually preventing the default action from happening and also stopping event bubbling. Or in other words, when we specified prevent default, only prevent default is happening. That is only the default action is prevented. But when we specify return false, the default action is prevented along with event bubbling is stopped or the events are not bubbling up to all the ancestor elements. So that is the difference between prevent default and return false. When we specify prevent default, event bubbling still happens and the default action is getting prevented. But when we specify return false, it also stops bubbling the events and prevent the default action from happening. So you can use return false or prevent default based on your requirement. So this is the main difference between prevent default and return false.